If you think that walking while drinking a pint, tripping and smashing the top rim with a glass into your nose, leaving a very nasty mark is tragic, then wait till you hear what happened down here in the Odessa catacombs to the Soviet partisans during World War II. I'm here today with Igor, who's going to show us around and tell us a little bit more about the partisans. Yeah, I'm uh, Igor, Igor Kalinin. I'm the guide for the catacombs for Odessa. So I'm into history and uh, mm, I work here in this museum, the secrets of underground Odessa. So I can tell you a few things about the partisans, about the catacombs and so on. The partisans are a movement organized by the Soviets to resist Nazi forces in occupied territories. In the case of Ukraine, it was the Romanians allied to Hitler who swept in from the west, took over Odessa, and brought it under the control of the Third Reich. Thankfully for the partisans, there's over 2,500 kilometers of tunnels down here. There's also a thousand different entrances, making it very easy to pop up and pop back down again without being found out. The NKVD, predecessor to the KGB, knew the importance of Odessa as a port city, and knew there was a massive network of tunnels down here that they could hide in, perfect for partisan activity. So they sent six agents from Moscow to come and rendezvous with 13 agents in Odessa. The goal was to meet up, get down here, set up a base, and start causing havoc, assassination, sabotage, and generally fanning the flames of resistance to the Nazis. What actually took place went a little bit messier than that. Pretty much immediately, it became obvious there was going to be a power struggle between Major Kuznetsov, who was leading the NKVD from Odessa, and Major Kalashin, who was leading those from Moscow. So they were trapped here very soon. Yeah. So I don't think they had done much damage, if uh, any at all. I don't think so. Most of the time they just stay here and shot each other one after another. <laughs> the most unsuccessful partisan group in Odessa. So what might have gone wrong? For one, they were woefully unprepared, expecting only to be down there for three to six months and having never lived in a catacomb in their lives. They were also betrayed by one of their comrades above ground, and under the threat of death, many Odessa citizens told the occupiers where the catacomb entrances were, allowing them to swiftly brick them up, mostly trapping the partisans inside. Whenever the partisans killed someone or sabotaged something, the Germans, Romanians would just retaliate on the civilians. They hanged uh, 5,000 people in the streets. So you can imagine that um, it wasn't really popular with the locals. You can imagine trying to live down here when just, you know, a few months down here could leave something looking like this because of all the humidity and the rust. It just completely screws up everything. And even just trying to live a normal life down here for months on end would have been insanely difficult. You can see how the mental stress really got to people. So you see, and all the supplies they had, they ran out of them. Everything was rusty, everything was moldy. Mm -hmm. You see, everything is rusty here because of the humidity, which is at least 80%. It was also, it was both on the mind and the body, the pressure, because mm -hmm. uh, they were always cold, always. When you stay in this darkness, uh, in this uh, humidity, the clothes uh, get wet. Yeah, yeah. Just wet as if they just took them out of the washing machine. <laughs> and you cannot wash them, uh, you cannot uh, dry them, I mean, so it's impossible here. So if you just put clothes, it's going to be wet for a long time. It doesn't wet. help. Yeah. So when you're always wet and the temperature is uh, quite low, as a result, you are cold all the time. So you have to move, you have to warm up yourself. Yeah. Which is tiresome. And if you just uh, lay down and sleep, you might not uh, awake because uh, it's possible to die of hypothermia. It's real danger if it's happened. So they had to hug each other all the time. <laughs> Both men and women. By the way, there was one woman here. Oh, really? Yes. A partisan woman? Yeah, one of the partisan group. Oh, wow. And she gave birth underground. Ooh. She uh, had a boyfriend or husband, I'm not sure. Anyway, mm, the child died very soon, never seen the sunlight. There's a funny thing about staying down in catacombs for too long or in any form of total darkness. Do you know how usually in a dark room, if you stay there long enough, you'll start to at least make out some details? Well, that doesn't happen down here. When there's no light at all to get into your eyes, it doesn't matter how well they adapt. You are not going to see anything because there is no light. When that happens, it's called sensory deprivation. And after about an hour, you'll start to hallucinate. After six hours, you're starting to go honestly a little bit mad. 
too much longer than that and it can be genuinely difficult to regain any sort of sanity because your brain has gone on this wild trip and it just can't come back from it. Many think that's what happened to Major Kuznetsov. He ended up arresting, trying and then executing Major Kalashin and all of his men apart from one, Abramov. He tried him for treason, which was of course all fake, and he executed him and uh, his aide. And I guess uh, he executed uh, like 10 of uh, his people total. The partisans eventually began to run low on fuel, meaning they were spending more and more time in darkness and Kuznetsov was becoming ever more and more paranoid. He ended up executing one of his men for stealing a small piece of bread. He executed a man and a woman, the only woman in the unit, for a lack of sexual discipline, whatever that means. I remember um, someone mentioned he executed uh, a man for urinating in the wrong place. For lack of piss and uh, discipline, probably. <laughs> lack of discipline. <laughs> <laughs> Enraged by the actions of Kuznetsov and fearing for their own lives, Abramov and Glushenko took the decision to kill Kuznetsov and his second in command, Litvinov. At this point, there are only two partisans left Abramov and Glushenko. Over half of the partisans who've been killed, killed by their own people. Now, so far, we've been filming by torchlight because, frankly, to do so just by candlelight would be a complete nightmare and honestly pretty dangerous. But we thought we'd show you what it'd actually be like to live down here. You wouldn't have electric lights, you wouldn't have any of the luxuries of relative illumination. You'd be stuck like this. And if your candle goes out when you're wandering around, then you're almost certainly going to die blind, cold, wet, and completely alone. At this point, you've got Glushenko and Abramov eyeing each other from across the room in the diminished light, wondering if they go to sleep, will they wake up in the morning? Will the other one snap and kill them? Now, in Glushenko's diary, he says that he actually did kill Abramov. However, this is not to be trusted. Abramov was actually found a few years later in 1963, living quite happily in France. So I guess he must have escaped despite most of the tunnels being sealed off. And what of Glushenko? Well, he lived down here for approximately another two years, making it the longest that anyone's ever continuously spent in the catacombs. There'd been enough rations for 19 people for six months, so when most of them have died after not very long at all, that actually means you can subsist down here for quite a long time. He was actually quite a handsome fellow, originally, but apparently when he came out he looked like he was about 70 years old. He came back down here with an NKVD group, after the war, to show them everything and to tell the story. Unfortunately, according to the official reports, a grenade randomly blew up in his hand when he picked it up. Considering he was the explosive expert and the NKVD would have a lot of reason to want him dead, that seems kind of unlikely to me. He just picked up a grenade that went off in his hands. Yeah. And that's their story, which I don't believe. Plenty of other gruesome and fascinating things have happened down here. From crime rings, smuggling rings, murders, people getting lost, wandering for days and then eventually dying of exposure and hypothermia. But to see all that, you'll just have to come here yourself. If I can put this, you can also visit my website, which is adesaguide.net. Why not pull a plug? <laughs>